Na 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 Roger. Na 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 Techno Metal Post. Na 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 It was cold in the middle of the night, but they don't care. That's Mikey from Critics to the left of me and to the right of me. I've got Carlito from Critics. To the right of me, we got Roger from Techno Metal Post. And to the right of me, you got Big Bad Mikey. And this is podcast number six, six in the six. And Roger. Medical Post. Welcome, oh, Roger. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That wasn't difficult to get out of him. Uh, we got Roger here from Techno Metal Post. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, we want to talk about uh, Old Dog's new tricks. So my question is, uh, if we can, what if we're balancing out the costs of concrete, digging a hole, uh, renting an auger, uh, getting water to the site, getting some electricity to mix the concrete, getting the post, cutting it with a skill saw, you know, setting up some two by four so that's straight, Coffee. putting a string line in line. Is it cheaper to go your way? Coffee. I already installed three piles while you were talking. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love wow. this guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? That, that's no, what, I, that's the, what I love about on this. On a serious note, when time <laughs> is money, we'll oh. drill them faster. See, at the end of the day, you know what we hear? Everybody's complaining. We can't find guys. We can't find guys. We're hard. You know, the... Everybody short staff, but at the end of the day, 14 years ago, okay, one of the Sunroom companies was saying, you know what, we're behind eight, nine months, we don't have the guys. I go, well, give this problem to me, I'll take care of it. So, what happens is these tradesmen, they're digging their own hole, so they're losing one to two days. So, if you're building one to two sunrooms a month, that at the end of the year is one extra sunroom. Wow. And that's where your profit margins is. 60 grand. So if you're a deck company, <laughs> you're building two to four decks more a year. And on top of that, you're in and out. And what happens, we're not going to, you're not going to be delayed. If it rains, we work in the rain. The only time it, we don't work is when there's Wait lightning. a second. You work in the rain. We just had a guy call in uh, uh, that he couldn't make it Don't do it, Arnie. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't do it. Did you see our post? Shut up. Don't bring it up. Did you see our post today? Our guy Names. was working. It's snowing. I saw the post. We, so hang on a second. You were saying you only you don't work in what? Uh, when there's a um, an ice storm, thunderstorm, thunderstorm. We just put the junior guy there. Why? Nice. <laughs> <That> one, <laughs> I was gonna say that would be quite the show, but he nailed it again. Hey, I really like can it. I, can I ask you? Does he usually get shocked? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we have screwed. a current for that. <laughs> <laughs> screw it and shocking. So, screw so it and shocking. Here, here's another, shocked, here's another question. Um, me being, me actually being very interested in using this in, in the next few months. What's the minimum and what's the maximum of amounts of columns or posts that you can do? Our minimum is one. Wow. One. And I'll tell you the reason wow. is we're you here to build. Really, hang on a second. You can't build a structure on one though. Yeah. A corner addition. Oh. Wow. Oh. Oh. Booyaka yeah. shakala. <laughs> Ah, yes, you can. A corner edition. He <laughs> got it. He got you, man. But the, the, ten the, by ten, one poto in and out. Thank you very much. Wow. Well, and, and and let everybody understand this. This isn't just about post. This is a structural business. Well, yes. Yeah, this like, is a structural you're ba- foundation. You're based about. You're based around engineers. That's it. Everything yeah. we do is engineer. Yeah. So it's all signed off. Yeah. Everything's been looked it, at properly. Yeah, for sure it's engineer. If I would have known what I know now, I would have went to be an engineer. Hey, that stamp is worth a lot of money. Hey, the, wow. only re- the only thing is, is it don't take 49 in university, so I wasn't able to be an engineer. So. <laughs> <laughs> I really like this guy. <laughs> is that your age or grade? <laughs> uh, both. <laughs> okay, so, but so we, we haven't me. even got into, sorry, we haven't even got into, like this is what I'm blown away by. No. You guys underpin. Yes. You underpin. You yes. underpin. Okay, here's so the So you're a helical pile company, structural. You're a helical structural pile company, engineering thing, entity, and you guys do everything plus decks. Yes. And let's define underpin. We don't do the underpin when you want to lower your basement. Yes. What we're going to do, we underpin when you just want to make sure that your house is not going to sink. If you, say in these Toronto, you want, it's a bungalow and you want to put a second story uh, addition. The foundation was designed for a bungalow. It was not designed for. We'll a underpin story. that bad boy from yes. the outside. Yes, both. 
So you're making oh new columns God. on the outside of the house? No, house? we're just going to transfer the load from the soil to the existing wall. In the basement? Yes, we could do oh port call. my Port, God. block, or solid. Give me your business card right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your pants. <laughs> Roger, Roger, you got any pictures you can show us? Oh, wait, hang on a sec. <laughs> uh, audio show, audio, okay, audio. Oh, all right, so you know what? We, okay, we're amazing. I, I've been really excited for the last you know, 15, 20 minutes here that we've Told already you, been talking. All yeah. because of the doc. I mean, uh, I don't want to lose track of, of what we're, we're talking about, old dogs, new tricks. Yes. So what can we add to this conversation right now? Well, Roger. the thing is, why, why are so many contractors so stuck on concrete for a post? Why? Why can't they get unstuck from that? You know what? Sometimes it's just easier to go in your phone and call the concrete guy because it's already there. Let, sorry, let me just tune in here. I'm probably more excited than everybody here on this table because I'm the least informed of your business. What's wrong with um, you? I, yeah, I just am. You know what? I was The helical piles are great. I want to learn more about it. I do have questions today as well. I personally thought it was strictly for building decks, and that was it. So yeah, man, I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions there, buddy. Well, I was, I was introduced to it uh, a few years ago on the show, um, and I thought it was one of the one of the most important things that have, has happened in technology and, and, and just in waste. Like we're not dealing with concrete anymore. So now we don't have to worry about putting concrete above the grass so that we don't get water sitting and stagnant in, inside the wood and you know, the concrete splitting and is that the biggest Is that the biggest discussion or argument that you get Roger regarding helical piles is like the concrete versus the helical pile kind of thing? Well, the first five years is that we get used to get a lot of that, but mainly now it's shifting on different aspects of the helical pile versus actually yeah. more caissons, bigger jobs. It, it's gone away from the small decks yeah. because we, people are starting to realize we do a lot more. Than well, we always give decks. themes to the, the podcast and we actually thought it was fitting that this podcast was uh, old dogs and new tricks. Because yeah. that's what you guys are all about, right? I'm and an old dog. We're, we're all old dogs. I'm new tricks. For a variety well, of other reasons. Yeah, He's and, new and I, I hate it when I see, uh, whenever I've seen guys disturb the soil and dig a huge hole and then put a sauna tube in. I always believe that sauna tube should be above the ground, not under the ground. I don't like disturbing the soil and having it, you know, loose and separate so it can move around. Roger, do you remember your last sauna tube? I remember my last sauna tube. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We still fix a lot of sauna tubes. Like in a couple of weeks when the frost gets up, it starts coming out. Oh, of you're going to be busy for a little while next, huh? We get hundreds and hundreds of calls. On that point with going with, uh, you know, the resistor and old dogs, the clients that are the biggest resistors, if they just give us usually five to 10 minutes, and it, once they understand the cost savings and the time and all those things that benefits them and their clients. I totally forgot and one, that. And once we man. do the job, these guys are shit. I should have called you five years ago. I got about five, six, seven. Now they see it. Now they see it. They so see it. what I learned is when I started 15 years ago, I was one of the first ones to bring helical piers in the residential sector with techno metal posts. Yeah. I thought this sucker was going to sell like hotcakes. I was like, this is easy. It's screwed <laughs> in the ground. Pitter patter. Let's get out of your, your building, right? And not so much, but it's what it, it was the mindset it was the mindset and it took me years and years and because i'm french from timmins ontario i can't speak french can't speak english i just put two together and uh, you had a lot of strikes against you I got a lot of mike strikes. thought you were from ottawa yeah uh, well, <laughs> close enough close he enough. looks like an ottawa senator so let me ask you <laughs> let me ask you roger do you get more resistance like because i guess you're trying to educate contractors as much as you're trying to educate homeowners or is it a balance? No, we try to do both in the sense that when we're doing home shows, yes. we're not there to sell. We're there to educate. explain, educate, give our brochure and say, you know what? Are you looking to build a deck? Are you looking to build a sunroom? Give this brochure to your contractor, designer, architect, and then we're going to help and work with them. What's the audience like? Is it is it like, uh, I don't know, one out of every four people come to you and they're like, I had no idea you guys even existed or this is an option? Well, I even five, six years ago, I'd say 80% of the people. Never 80%. It. Uh, we even hit, uh, I even hit uh, structural engineers that still don't, never oh, use helical I, piles. I've met, I've met those engineers. It's not their fault. I didn't, they, they didn't have the t the people to be able to go do those jobs. Uh, so I, now you're, you're getting 
uh, people that have, uh, you know, we're able to do the piles, smaller piles cost a lot less. We have small machinery that we built, design. So we're able to come in the backyard in Toronto in 29 inch gate. Yeah. And be able to give the service and the yeah. product to the homeowner. Or go through the house. I've it's seen amazing. you guys go through yeah. the house. Yeah, we have electric motors. We could bring that bad boy right in the house and start drilling. Look at that, huh? Smaller, us, smaller um, holes. Really yeah. important. Yeah, for sure. Unbelievable. Roll, roll Tighter areas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, restricted access. We could even... Um, take our uh, head right off our machine and bolt it to the floor and do it right from the inside. What? Yeah, we we do it all. It's crazy. Uh, I mean, for me, for me, it was really important. I've, I've done a lot of decks. So removing and replacing decks, one of the things I hated would be around April and May right now, people want to start doing decks. So they say, tear my deck out. And I'm, I'm in there with crowbars and guys and we're trying to pull out these big, huge concrete slabs out of the ground, drag them through, put them in a wheelbarrow, try to get them out to the front. The beautiful thing about your product is you can unwind it and you're gone. And you're done. Actually, we actually just had a job where we installed eight piles in Ajax on uh, on Friday. The contractor calls us back and he says, oh, we made a little mistake. We're going to have to remove and replace all of them. So we went back today and uh, we took them all out. Laughed drilled. about it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we didn't charge the client because we're, we're here to build relationships. And what that means is sometimes shit happens. It doesn't go perfect all the Sometimes. time. So <laughs> at the end of the day, all the they made a mistake. We're not there to but, but show them the off. We, Accidents happen all the yeah, time. We and went there, took them out, drilled them back in, and they kept on building. Beautiful. And, and no waste. You no were waste. able to use the same piles. Exactly. Where if we would have poured concrete and used wood, that would have been all garbage. Yeah. So you can also drill right beside trees without pissing off the arborists well we do a lot of work actually arborists are starting to push us especially if you want to build an addition a garage near tree root systems well the arborists are going to say you know what you need helical piles expose the root two feet once the root's there we'll put our helix underneath and just start drilling you, and you know you gotta crazy. get them you know you it's, gotta get them to say, genius man you gotta get them to say you need techno metal post helical piles yeah, exactly. well, that's <laughs> what you, need to you know what well, the best yeah. thing too is uh a friend of mine owns a cottage up in Muskoka. They want a, a dock, a dock done. They want a dock built that goes across duck. the water. <laughs> a duck, a duck. Did I say duck? A dock. You're a dick. <laughs> Here's the plan. Uh, with respects to docks, you guys can do that as well, right? Well, that's funny you say that because when I was when I first moved to uh, Oakville, uh, everything's in funny. 2000, I say by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, I was a firefighter, and I was like, you know what? I want to do something different. I, you know, I want to, I want to be out there. I want to be outside. And I was up in Timmins. My dad, he gives me a brochure, and he goes, "They just build a dock boardwalk right on the lake in Gillies Lake in Timmins." Oh wow! Six foot. The way they did it was. Five feet, six feet of frost, they drilled right in the winter time. Well, and wow. this is important to right 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 So wait a second. This is what I'm saying. See? So basically that's why I brought that up. Yeah. No mess, no concrete. No. These things are reinforced. The dock is gonna well, withstand. Well, Go ahead, you, you said something really important. Yeah, when, you're dealing, I always when you're dealing with waterfront property, <laughs> yeah. a lot of times the conservation doesn't want you to deal with concrete. You're a they don't brick. want I stuff wanted going to in say the ground. That. Who? That's conservation. Exactly. Conservation. <laughs> Any, anybody, I own a waterfront property. I got three acres in the water in, in Prince Edward County, mm -hmm. and you can't break a rock or a stick. And they don't want contamination of any kind. They want to tell you what kind of soil, what kind of concrete is going to go. And your product is environmentally friendly. The conservation and authorities, those are the ones that are pushing us. Because at the end of the day, we're coming here. We're not going to excavate. We're not going to kill the root systems. That's we're the crazy. only ones in the world. Our machines, we use vegetable oil. At the end of the day, you don't want nothing to go I in. I love that. Wow. Wow. You use vegetable oh, oil. You guys can have machines? your salad and eat it too. Let, exactly. me, <laughs> let me know when you guys start using olive oil. Yeah. <laughs> no, It's so, not good for you when you heat it up. So the government's <laughs> all on board with this then? I think uh, in back in 2005, 2006, we met with a couple of conservation authorities at Landscape Ontario. They liked our system. We did a few boardwalks and I've probably done about 30 to 40 boardwalks in the last 10 to 12 years. The Aren't boardwalks are not I made anymore with concrete now, can, sauna I, tubes. can I ask you something? Because I want to learn something. Yep. If I am doing a waterfront property, what kind of metal are you using? Are you using galvanized? Are you using a cold steel? What, what are you using? <clears throat> okay, that's a very good question. So at the end of the day, <laughs> we're the only ones in the world. We have a sister company called Techno Protection, which is a corrosion solution system. So what happens, depending on a soil type, the environment, 
and what you need and how long you need protected, we could give a solution for you. Give you an example. If the when they're building those big bridges on the side of the highway, what are they using? They're using steel I beam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're using black steel. And what they're doing with that, the engineers will calculate how much rust is going to happen within 50 to 100 years. And what they'll do is they'll use more steel. Same principle of with us. Mm. We could use black steel. We could use black steel that is hot dip galvanized, which is going to give some added protection. We could also use sacrificial anodes. And we could also use impressed current, which means that we could actually stop corrosions from all the pipes in Toronto. So we can what? make your With piles last forever. It's a current forever. system. It, you have a yeah. current running through it? Yeah. That's brilliant. We've actually developed a product where we put titanium in our helical piers, drill them in, put a small little uh, milli millivolt in your house and it costs about five to ten dollars a year i was just gonna ask and that your what? your piles okay. will never rust when we're protecting steel we're protecting everything below the ground wow above the ground you you either you're protected with you know paint uh, you could put galvmac cold dip or you use um, you know hss or you could use stainless steel so for us we protect everything below ground so Amazing. Uh, what was that? And that one there was called the it's techno like techno protection. Techno pro and your cup and it's techno metal. Oh, Do you yeah. guys walk into a techno party one day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call this company techno metal foes. <laughs> I love techno. And I even have a better one for you. We do another one called techno slabs. Wow. Where you we know don't what? Put that techno <laughs> slabs. <laughs> yeah. Euro beats. <laughs> <laughs> techno slabs. Say you if you want to build a little addition, a little bump out. Yeah, of course. Instead yeah. of digging down eight feet, bringing it up. Especially in Toronto, downtown yeah. here, trying We're to get machinery back there. What we'll do is we'll put two piles, put some high-density foam with rebar, attach it to the house. We'll do it for a fraction of the cost, and it's guaranteed and engineered, never well, to heave or settle. A lot of times when we're augering holes, guys are constantly getting injured because the auger's out of control, yes. they're hitting rocks, and, and people are just getting hurt. You're actually doing all the work for the same price. So it's easier to hire you to come in than go rent a machine and do it yourself. Yeah, and a lot of times cheaper. And the reason why I could say that is because our product is an engineered and a guaranteed product, on some of the times we could reduce the number of peers. So our job is to sell piles, but our main job is to give value to the contractor, the homeowner. So if we're doing a 12 by 12 addition and we could get away with two, three piles and instead of four to five, I'm going to say, hey, we could hold That's it a lower. lot of work. It's yeah. a lot cheaper for you guys to use triple two by tens, triple two by twelves, re-engineer, redesign a little bit, save some piles. So at the end of the day, if we come in and install two piles. One of the, th one of the things I hate also is by the time I finish augering the hole or hand digging the yep. hole, I have all this loose soil now that's fluffy and I have to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And with your system, you're just drilling in and that's it. There's no more waste. No, and you don't even need an inspection from the building department. We'll give you an engineered letter, letting you know how deep you went, what type of torque it's going to hold, the load bearing capacity on a service load with a two to one safety factor. So, so everything we do is guaranteed and engineered. So Roger came in here to talk about decks, but you guys ain't. Well, there's, guys there's a lot decks. to talk about. Oh, yeah. Before we can even talk about decks, I want to learn more about the product. This is really yeah. educational Why for me. Why don't you guys all go kill yourselves? I thought that's what the, that was the only well, thing they did. Thought I thought well, it was no, just no, decks. No. Well, we'll, we'll call we... this techno metal decks. No, it's <laughs> so, not. I don't know, man. We, I didn't know. What are the biggest know. thing we try to tell our contractors is guys we're a tool in your toolbox if you don't use us you're too you're big not to be a tool in my toolbox so at the end of the day here <laughs> is if you have projects send it to us send it to our engineering department our engineers are the best in the world we're the first ones in the world to ever get a certification in canada we have us we have uk and we have france and we also have iso so we have do you have uh, portugal and croatia and italy uh i don't know about I, I, I think <laughs> regard, i you think know what? Croatia, Actually, it'll be rebar i'm just, the whole day I'm because just, you've got I'm a just, portuguese guy and a, and a croatian guy and if an it was guy actually, you if know manny's portuguese it'd be going into fish no <laughs> actually oh, I think, oh, you're gonna you know what? a lot of portuguese <laughs> i'm italian his, his would be going into concrete <laughs> you have all Olive oil. Mine yeah, would be exactly. sardines. Yours would be grenades. Yeah. <laughs> the Italians are sorry, the best Roger, kinds. Sorry, Roger. Um, one, one we're actually in eleven countries. We're in Canada, U.S., France, Swiss, Cuba, Spain, New Zealand, Cuba. UK, 
Germany, oh, Britain, and Luxembourg. Okay, so so I can ask you a question then. Do I still have to apply for a permit removing a deck and replacing it if I'm going through you? That if it's above two two feet off the grade, you still have well, to apply. With it, it depends on every well, city. We don't get yeah. sorry, sorry, okay. that's true. That's true. It's, it depends okay, on the city. So what I see, yeah, what I see to on that, city. <laughs> even if you don't need a permit, you could still get a use our engineer Your engineer. Product. See, that's because what I love. If it's some, like, say you want to, you would build a deck. I'm going to say, are you going to put a roof on this? Are you going to do anything? What you could do is we'll get the loads. We could actually maybe upgrade the piles and increase the loads. And if you want to build future, a sunroom or something, in the future, at, a least pergola. You, at least you're not screwed. Because yeah. what you do is you're just going to show the inspector and say, dude, look it. You're not screwed. We're talking about helical piles. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> but literally, but literally you, you are screwed. You are yeah. screwed. <laughs> He Literally, can also, Roger, Roger you know, screwing us. Yeah, okay. He can also Roger, unscrew us. Roger, <laughs> Roger, I want to hog you here, yeah, okay? Yeah. I, I know these guys have a lot to say, but oh, I got a couple go questions. Ahead, shoot, shoot, a couple, shut shoot. up, yeah. shut up, shut up. Let me get through it first. A, cu- a couple more questions. Yeah. So for me being a... Fo- hey, there's no test, though, after this. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Better known to pass these tests. Well, you know what? As long as you're not testing me after. Yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> so um, another thing for me is... Um, one, one thing that I don't agree with is minimum code for uh, depth of frost. Yes. So I'm a farmer. Uh, we got 100 Part cows. We got 300 farmer. acres also. Yes. <laughs> um, and we have a problem with our fences constantly uh, tipping over. We have to actually go to six to eight feet. Yes. Now, I heard the same principle is actually in the city. It doesn't matter that we're up in up north. They're changing it. Right? Well, what, what I like about your system and what I don't quite understand yet because I didn't get it complete. I know that under 1,600 pounds of pressure, you guys pretty much stop the drilling. Is that right? Nope. Okay, so so oh, oh there is a <laughs> no, no, no. now now remember uh, wrong. Uh, I, I I did learn this about like ten years ago. Yeah, what I'm curious about is uh, being a four feet minimum. Yeah, w- does the frost affect? Okay, so four feet has nothing to do with low bar okay. capacity, just for frost protection. So that not, has nothing to do with local. That's your, that's your green sleeve. That no four feet. That's the building department it says yes. you live in this area four feet. You live up north in Timmins six, six feet. feet or whatever. So four feet. We never use that. For as again, you and that's the the issue with concrete sauna tubes. You could build the most beautiful concrete sauna tube in the world with rebar, MPA, this that patty whack, give a dog a bone. <laughs> if, I like it. Hey, this that patty <laughs> whack, give a dog a bone. <laughs> if, I love it. If it's installed in bad soil, the sucker's gonna matter. sit. It doesn't I know. matter. So it doesn't matter. What is bad soil? Bad soil. Just so I can okay, I know so for conditions when I look at them. This is the way helical piers work. So we have a pressure gauge on our machine. That pressure gauge correlates to a torque. The, it's the torque that correlates to low bearing capacity. What that means is when you're in a 10 speed, remember when you're in a small gear, and you're trying to go uphill, you're going nowhere fast. You got to change the gear. You're, you're pedaling fast and you're going up. That's all that means. So we use a rotary head and our machines are made for power. The only thing they, our machines do is install helical pile. So we have our biggest machine we have three machines our biggest one can install piles 12 inch in diameter and with a load of fifty five thousand pounds wow okay Holy so shit. wait fifty five thousand so the pressure wow. has nothing to do with the load so what you're saying is i i know 12 13 years ago is we have a p2 and our p2 is loaded for about almost ten thousand pounds so at the pressure on those machine, it gives us roughly 1,500 pounds. Uh, so that's what they're saying. So you're, the, the, the pressure is only... And, and it will change depending on what you're building or what you're carrying then. Well, it, it, it's depending on... So helical piers is like bacon muffins. Different recipes give like you muffins. different types of muffins. With helical piers, different soil conditions, you got to use different size helixes. So a six-inch helix could hold as much load as a 24 inch helix depending oh, on the type I of soil okay. so if you're in a dense dense soil you got to use a smaller helix you're going to get still a lot of torque so that's why it doesn't matter uh the but pressure. you want the footprint from a larger helix yeah. or like a loose earth so you want to use a larger helix well, exactly give you an example if you have a 10 inch helix you do the area on that 10 times 10 gives you like a sandy 100 so you- square inches well, now if you want to go to a 16 inch, 12 inch, you see, let's just say a 12 inch, 12 inch, 12 times 12 gives you 144 square inches. That 10 to the 12 gives you almost 50% more load bearing capacity. So that's the recipe there. It's the size of the helix 
type of soil and we could actually use multiple helixes for different types of soil. So we could use a double, triple, quadruple helix system. Our engineers, there, there's a reason why we've done more tests in the world than anybody. We've done, our CCMC has over 55 tests all over the world. So we, when we get a geotech, we could give you the recipe and we know exactly what you guys need to give you the lateral moment load compression shear we could give you it all so basically you're getting a geotech survey you're getting the drawings from a house and then you guys can determine exactly engineer wise what you need to make that structure work in that soil condition yes if we have all that we could give you exactly i know this area pretty good i know if you go to burlington on north shore there's that's all swampland yeah you're going 18 20 feet beaches you're going to go and deeper is that fairly easy to reach Oh, that's very easy. I've gone down 175 feet in uh, Hamilton Harbor. 175 Shut the feet front okay, door. But, but I think, and now I'm, no one's ever told me this, but I'm just assuming if if I'm looking at your your uh, post, yeah. it's got threads on it, and it's drilling itself into the ground, right? So for no, it's got he the, doesn't it's got have threads. It's got the helix. The it's, helix it, itself is the only right. portion. But for each one of those threads, that's an act like a footing. Normally, no, there, we is, have no, one, there no, is no, no, no threads, Carlito. Okay, it's so one. the helix is the thread. It's, yes. the, it's yes. one thread. See? I'm listening, guys. Holy I'm shit. listening. So, so thread for each, equals helix. <laughs> so for each ring, basically, you're going footings along the whole way. So you're not just getting one footing. You're getting like eight or nine exactly. footings. Oh, so even more... Is that right? Yes. And on top of that, say you need... Is it? Yes. Is it? But he was, wait, How many helixes are you adding? Well, depending on the soil conditions. Oh, but more, so based on the soil conditions, you're going to add... Yeah. All right, sorry. Well, sorry. Holy shit, Cardinal. This, sorry, I'm you're listening, right, I'm listening to yeah, this, that, and I'm that, like, wow, this is like a class. Well, that, picture to screw, right? I, yeah, no, but I thought it was only one. No, but... That's if, what I thought, For too. most no. jobs. Yeah, but so depending on the soil... you add helixes as yes. you go? Well, it depends on the soil conditions. Exactly, and also the loads, because... Yes. Did you remember that job you went to see the soccer? Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're using single helix P3s. Okay. For compression, and we're also using double helix systems P4 HDs on battered to give us that lateral load and also we, that we tension did that. load. You it was amazing. Yes. We actually had to go project? off a hill and pick up really? the load. Cool. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hang on a sec. Mike was just asking off. I, like he didn't think the camera was on him on an audio show. <laughs> he's got uh, soccer, dude. He's doing some kind of soccer project. No, Why no, the hell yeah. did explain you tell the, me about no, no, this? No, 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 explain, explain this soccer project because oh, I got a peek at goalie, it, right? The, the, the goal nets. The nets? No. no. Oh. The whole soccer dome. The what whole happened? Dome. Oh, my God. <laughs> this company bought a property and it had backfill. So okay. if they wanted to go down to, this, to good soil, they would have had to dig down or four feet for their uh, frost wall then they would have had to go down another 10 feet to hit the good soil oh. so what they did is they dug down four feet we're coming and drill our piles and we're able to uh, save, save them, them tons, tons of money of and a lot of time okay I really and i really like what, this product. what is your what is your limit like okay we're talking about sand conditions well, we're talking what about soil conditions. Like, what what do you guys does it stop at bedrock does it we come? don't do bedrock Slate? We actually could go in, uh, there's uh, certain areas in Oakville where we do have older shale. Depending on the shale, we could drill in that. Well, Prince, we could drill Prince through. Edward County. I'm, I'm on a, a huge slate island. Um, so could you drill through that? I'm building, a, I'm building a bed and breakfast up there and I want to do an addition. So I'm very curious about this because <coughs> instead of doing coding. <coughs> Plug. Plug. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so I, I, I want to know. To be honest, I don't know that area. Okay. So I can't say yes or no on that type but of stuff. But you guys would go there and you guys would like, or somebody would yeah. do a geo survey. You know what? We do a lot, we do help a lot of our clients. We'll go bring our machine, do a soil test. And when I mean a soil test, we'll be able to tell you and say, you know what, dude? We could drill four, six, eight, nine feet. We could get this type of uh, torque. And these are parameters where we could help you in design. It happens where. If we're not below frost, five, four or five feet, and we hit bedrock, we can't do the job. There's other ways to do it. We're, we're able to excavate. We could actually anchor into the bedrock, core drill. We have a few options for that. But at the end of the day, the helical piers in the screw piles, techno metal poles, we're into more the soil. Any okay. soil... That's that's our specialty. We're trying to build better. We're trying to use better products, new products. And this isn't even a new product. This has been around for a while. How long Just, has it been around, Roger? Well, you know what? Technology is over 150 oh, that's, years old. That's remember? Right. I remember that, that. Scottish guy. He's yes, putting piles yes, around horses. Yes. But 
the commercial industry is over 100 years, but the helical piers in a residential market was created by us. It was 25 years ago. Conservation is a huge problem. Yes. And a lot of people have waterfront properties. I'm, I'm just digging what you guys you got. Get you it digging? Yeah. <laughs> Stop <laughs> screwing so, around. So Carlito, <laughs> Carlito, Carlito you, you, don't <laughs> mind, you don't mind a big excava excavator to come in and well, start listen, ripping the soil I have, apart? I have a backhoe. Then a big cement truck we, to come we in. We have cottages a, right on the water. I have a big backhoe. I could do it myself. But you know what? Why disturb? soil why make a mess you don't need to when yeah. i can save some money and just get someone else to do it one thing i'm learning is sometimes just get other people to do what they're good at well not only that i you won't save money because in five ten years when you're you're it's sinking because a high water table in the soil you're gonna it's gonna cost you more money so at the end of the Always day cost it costs less it money so could i call us. could i call you back and get you to drill deeper in we actually if you're used as the first time, you don't have you to call me back. To, it ever. never happens. So what's the life expectancy then? The it warranty. all depends on the, the type of soil. Between 75 to 150 oh years. Oh my God. We could still put a corrosion solution and make it last 300 or 1,000 years. Wow. It all corrosion depends solution how for long the you creation. want it. Sensation. Exactly. Wow. wow. <laughs> Hang on a second. I need all, Roger, your, I need all your attention. Roger, I need your attention. I'm starting to like yes, this. I need yes. Yes. everybody to just yes. focus on me right now. <laughs> sure. So ready for this? <laughs> Aren't you guys glad I asked if we can build docks with this? Okay. <laughs> so where, where do you think that um, there's a lack of your product that needs more attention that people aren't aware of we still have always those resistors once in a while that they've been well, you get see the i old always get that guys. yeah the old school yeah i've been in uh, construction for uh, 30 years <laughs> and uh, i've installed a Hi. thousand concrete sonotubes. tubes <laughs> i've never had one sink then mm. they use us say so, yeah hey, could you come check this job there I, uh, one of my fucking sauna tubes uh, sank <laughs> i like this guy i'm like dude it, it's, it's happened about 10 times you know, but dude, it's okay I, dude. I totally well, visualize those two guys yeah. that he just described i can visualize him going up to a guy in a suit hey there dude okay <laughs> let's let's remember <laughs> this though this is completely recyclable yeah. everything yep. else is not yeah so yep. anything that we'd be using for posts or footings it would have to be demolished it have removed, to be destroyed discarded. and have to be reused or recycled you know what? Yeah. I think we and have our first celebrity on this show. You're a fucking celebrity. <laughs> on, Buddy, sorry. this is Carlito, amazing. I thought you were a celebrity. Oh, yeah, you thought sorry. I was a celebrity. Uh, and we yeah. a wanna be celebrity. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's not get this uh let's not misinterpret. You can't bullshit a bullshitter. <laughs> Hey, take the rye off of that guy. That's going <laughs> to be too much. Natural That's what buddy. I'm telling you. When I met Roger nine years ago and he started telling me this spiel. It was a no-brainer for me, man. I was like, bye-bye concrete. I haven't used concrete since for a pile, for a pier, for anything. Technology really changes. Like 10 years go by, if you're not educating yourself and you're not paying attention to the changes, you could lose out really fast. Where are you guys going to be 10 years from now? Can we in the next 10 years possibly Christ, get a pile man. installed in Portugal? Maybe one in Croatia? You know what? Hey, we don't really can care. Can I change my company well, you to know create what? techno metal posts? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? That's Techno metal post is the leader in the world, Helical Piers. We're always looking to expand. Here's a good question for you. Have you guys ever hit a fucking boulder? <laughs> Look, no, that joke, what happens, never. Right? What never. happens if you hit a rock? Well, uh, I start running the other way. You pack your bags no. and leave, Pack your right? bags, go home. It's, 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 it's very simple. You hit a boulder, you start getting the fucking banjo out, you start digging. <laughs> With the hand jig. But if it's below two feet, our machine's so powerful that we can move that rock out of the way. We can move some no. big boulders. So we could do some crazy stuff. But typically, if the rock is within the first two feet, our helix is always going to skip to the side. So you just take it out, you drill it. Our company, when you call us, we get the shit done. We're not, mm. you're not going to call it. You're not going to get a call from us and say, Hey, we hit a rock. No, no. We get the job done. That's it. That's all. That's wow. what but I got. When I spoke to Roger, that what I got is that they problem solve you. But if you have a, Let's, if you got you a, a boulder that's five feet wide, Hey dude, you're shit out of luck. Get but the you, know, you need an excavator. But, you know what? That's but the nice thing with that is once you get the, the excavator, out, if you're using concrete, now you got to put concrete all over. All over it. But yeah. we don't use the soil around it. So you just drill the pile, backfill, wow. and then you're ready but, to rock. But Mike, think about this. What does a customer want? He doesn't want any excuses. No. He wants to hear that you've come in, Solutions. you've taken yep. care of the problem, Solutions. and it's done. Yeah. That's all people want to hear these days. When we hit a rock, and if we're not a... My guys have quality control. If they're off more than half an inch, <laughs> they got to call the office, and they got to get a go-ahead. So what happens is, if we're off by a half an inch or more, we're going to look at the drawings... And we're going to find three to four solutions. So when we call you and say, hey, buddy, this is a ridge beam or this is a corner beam. We could we move the pile six inches here, two inches there. So we're going to call with solutions. We're not just going to call and tell you that. Oh, by the way, we're by, off. 
we're off. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. They're problem so, solvers. Yeah. So rocks aren't, don't scare you. Nope, not at all. Actually, we love rocks because a lot of the times the concrete guys with their, uh, their postal diggers are saying, we can't do this shit. Call Techno Metal Post. <laughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially awesome. in Guelph where it's full of rocks, Cambridge. You should just stick we, stickers on the augers. Yeah. <laughs> we can't you know, do this. I'm going to say that tomorrow. Post. I don't want to do this shit anymore. I'm going to call Techno Metal Post. Yeah. Wait a second, Mike. You're renovating inside someone's home. Manny, you've, got a, 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 you've spoken to Roger. You know a lot about the product. I, I'm an old school guy, 30 year guy in construction, but I am willing to change and I'm always I'm always looking for a new way to educate myself. How this old is about are you? I'm 46, <laughs> but I started at a very early age and I've always worked hard. Us being involved and Rock you knowing hard. everything about engineering and what's going on with soil because Mike has never worked with this. Never. You got a fresh fish here. Oh my God. What? Fresh is fresh. Uh, how do you convince this? So, so hang on fresh. a sec. So, Mike, yesterday you would have done a post hole, hole and poured concrete into it. Well, not me, but somebody would have did that. Yeah, you would have <laughs> delegated. Yeah, like me. <laughs> delegated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no problem. No problem. Yeah, I okay, see where you're going with but, this. But but now, how would you handle that? I would call Roger from Techno Metal Post. And 100% use you guys. No, but here, here's a good question. Like, you know, he, he's hearing some great, like, he's got the opportunity to, well, I know to the listen side. to our I stories. I know the concrete side. How often are you having problems with old guys not, like, how do you really change well, someone over? I guess the real over? question is, is it the old guys or the new guys, the young guys? Yeah, that you're having problems with. No, you know what? Really, or it's every changing. guy. Or it's, are you even having problems? You're not no, having No, it's problems. not really the problem itself. If they call us, they're, that's halfway there. Yeah. Give you an example. This is a product that's visual. When I first became one of the dealers, I was all excited, full of piss and vinegar, thought I knew everything. I'm like, I'm going to do this, that, patty whack. I started doing, <laughs> I do a lunch and learn an architect for me. And I'm like all excited, given, uh, you know, trying to be political, trying to do the nice thing, be talking in their language. I bring the, them all outside, show them the post. And one of the uh, people go, so where does the dirt go? <laughs> I go. I told you. I'm like, so I show them, I explain to them, I do my best. Obviously, I failed. So you have to see it. So if somebody's calling it, it's typically referral or now they've seen it on or uh, social media. Or, well, the problem is that's the key. When the old school ones call us with the problems, we solve it, they're done. Give an example. We did two big buildings. They already had all the lines in, all the walls were up. And then they're like, you know what? All the clients, they wanted to do mezzanine. But to do mezzanine, they would have had to dig 36 inch case on six feet deep. We came in, re-engineered it, uh, drilled in uh, 300 piles. And then we were done in a week. Then for they built our mezzanine. For, at a lower yeah. cost. At a lower cost. And we eliminated the concrete and we put our pile welded a flat plate and they put a steel column right on it. Do you guys have like a, a, a fence post system? Well, yeah, you know what? We actually could, because we're welders, we could actually weld uh, box brackets right on right onto that. On but site. Your normal fence is not a structural fence. You could do a concrete sonal for 20 bucks. They don't go two, three feet. They hit a rock. They start running the other way. They cut the top. No, to they start mixing the concrete at that so, time. Yeah. That's not, we, we mainly deal in structural foundation supports. We do do some fences, um, but we do have a solution for they that. They cut the top of the sauna tubes. Okay, how about how about? Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. You're right. You know what? That's exactly what happens. Yeah. So Fuckers. I, I want to do I want to do two big columns with a gate. Well, I could call you guys. Drop in uh, two posts. Yeah, we'll put and two then put P5s. A on top. No, there's no footing. We'll eliminate that. So we'll, I just put my block on top and. Yeah. Well, we do those as well. We'll drill a, uh, our P5, P3. We could weld a 24 inch by 24 inch flat plate. Wow. And then you go up with your column and you put your stone right around that. So that's what kills me. Is that yeah, you we can, have solutions for you that. Can, you can put the flat plate. You can make it a large flat plate. You yep. can accommodate so you can actually put a brick column. So you can yep. do a 12 inch by 12 inch brick column right on top of that. Wow. Steel lentils <laughs> right on our flat plate. You can do a six plate. by six post. You can do a 12 by 12 by. This is saving a lot timber. of work. Well, if you go to Canada's Wonderland, all the timber kits, those are all on our piles. Wow. They're not doing concrete no more. You know what it is, oh, though? Gosh. I think a lot of the old dogs and the new tricks, they look at it, and when they're looking at a deck or a structure or a post or a sign or something, and you see that little green sleeve in the, and the actual flat plate that's holding everything, to them, it visually looks like wrong. It, it, it doesn't make any sense. They want to see that concrete 
there called the future. You yeah. Know what okay. I mean? Well, well, here, here's, here's me being a contractor and you know, just one of the regular guys, you know, where we're, we're talking about educating ourselves. I want to educate myself. Um, if I don't go to a home show or I don't look up your, your site, how else can I find you? Word of mouth. Like, but like, is there a, like, do you have a, a storefront that like construction? Well, what, life, our, baby. This is the, <laughs> the way we've been trying to do it is us. It's simple. We try to meet every contractor one on one, see what they what their needs are, and explain to them one on one. Build a me. relation. So yeah, you know what? It is a bit slower. It's it's very important for us to be able to hear what you guys need and be able to give you what you guys want. There are so many different applications. We want to know what's what do you do? What's your main goal? What do you do a lot? You do retaining walls. You do decks. You do pergolas. You want to, car leader, you want to talk about rock hard? I actually was fortunate enough to be invited to the head office there. And I was in a room of all the key players that he's described here so far in this podcast. Where and it was amazing. <laughs> what, they were all rock no, hard? hang on a second. <laughs> Holy God. <laughs> Can't take this guy anywhere. Hey. <laughs> I'm getting to the point of that you're um, in a room with problem solvers. You're in a room full of engineers and people that you have a structure. But this isn't theory. This is practical. A lot of people have run yeah. into these, all these problems. Yeah. Okay, but that so makes that, a that's huge what, difference. That's what amazed me is that I got a chance to actually see how the product's made, how it's assembled, the factory and everything, where it all came from, where it originated from. But you have people that are sitting there with problem solvers. They look forward to grabbing drawings for something new, a new structure, and being sent these drawings to them to go, listen, can you guys figure out how this is going to get structurally sound? And that's what I enjoyed being there. I was like, I was in heaven, basically. You're in a construction zone. You're kind of talking to all these guys and you're listening to what they have to say and contribute. And that's what I liked about the product. It made a lot of sense. Not once did we talk about concrete. Unless there was a couple of times we actually talked about the slab. Yes. Where you guys were talking about helical piles and then you rebar and you create a slab that will never move now because it's sitting on your pile. Which is another thing. Because we all know that if you put a slab, it looks great for that season. Then what happens come spring? Yeah. Listen, how many times have I put posts in? Every time I look back at it, it's cracked. Yeah. It's well, yeah, separating. Because- Frost has got in there. Water sitting stagnant. It's rotting <laughs> everything out. Because you got a tailgate warranty. Those guys, <laughs> they, they, they can't get... No, but That's it's awesome. not their fault. They no. can't give you a warranty because... They can't because give it to you. That's they why. don't know the soil. It's not that the contractors are doing a bad job. Even if you it's do... what they know. By code, it's all about the soil. If you know, you're in a cohesive soil, a clay soil, yeah. retains water, yeah. it's, it's going to undulate 68 inches in a frost... Th- cycle it's not the You're slab screwed. that Climbing. failed it's the soil that failed or the slab that's sitting on the soil that exactly failed, the way it's sitting on exactly the soil. so if you properly engineer it you use frost protection you use good rebar you use the proper mpa concrete and you come up with a good system that sucker ain't gonna move well Never. You, every you, you know everybody always tries to save a buck and instead of using a 12 inch sauna tube they'll use a 10 or an 8 they'll always try to cut corners so you, you are right they're and they're taking away the engineering when they shouldn't be and that's the good the point. key with techno metal post because it's an engineered product we never cut corner. It's always it's guaranteed. designed based well, on your needs exactly. for your structure. Exactly. Wait. Well, in 2008, that was one of my big, my first bigger projects. You guys are familiar with St. Lawrence Market? Yeah. Well, the, remember that, that that was a parking lot. What they did was is they wanted to build that temporary building. So close to the lake? So if they would have started excavating, they would have had to go 20, Open 40 feet. It would have caught wow. a lot of money. Wow. So where we came, we drilled some big piles, used some P5s that had a lot more lateral Drill 30 piles, they put steel beams, we're done in a week. And then five years, we came Take and drilled. Right oh out. my Tell God. Them. So what's the difference between, okay, so going back 10 years ago to my story of, uh, of using the, the first generation of, yeah. well, that I know of uh, with your product, it was all galvanized. Yeah. So you got cold steel. What is that cold steel? Okay, giving an example of our product. So we start at a P1. A P1 is an inch and seven eighths diameter, and that's going to hold a roughly 6,800 pounds. The steel we use is ASTMC structural steel. Hot dip galvanized at 610 grams per square meter. It's very high galvanized. Any solution, any pile, any load, we have different types of piles, different types of solutions for what you need. We get calls all the time. Yeah, I want, could you come and help me? I want a deck. I'm like, okay, we give them a price. I'm like, well, I only got a budget for 30 bucks. I'm like, dude, get blocks. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, if you don't want to go by code and you want to just go save money and it's quality is not your bucks. number one um, ish, your, your priority, priority. Priority, yep. So there, you could get some of these uh, tiebacks 
But you, uh, you Carl, can't you, build on them. They're not engineered. Have you heard of these kind of hand screwed ones? The ones that are doing I, uh, yourself? No, I've, 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 I've only I've used. I've only, used uh, I've only seen the ones you're talking about for tents. Building yeah, yeah. No, like big tents. Tents. No, the like building big department will not certify those. They won't certify. You can't build. But see, on that's those. what bothers me is that there's a product out there that is kind of jumping on your, you know, product, but it's not. The reason I respect you guys and what you guys do is because of that energy engineering certi- certification attached to it. Well, I, also, I love engineers. Also, they're doing the work. They know what's going on. They, they figure run it out into all based the on your drawings, based on your soil conditions. Well, and the nice part is that with that is, Man, yes, because we do every pile our, ourselves, is we'll do a deck, and a deck at the time didn't need engineering or didn't need uh, a, a, an inspection because it was low. They'll call us five years and say, you know what? We want to expand. Could we do this? Could we put this load? We'll look at our, our fill reports, our engineering, and say, you know what? Yeah, we could give you a letter stating that these new loads is going to hold. You run into contractors like us all the time. No um, way he, he runs into contractors. I run like away from well, these maybe, types of contractors. Yeah, maybe no. not like Mike. No, maybe exactly. not like Mike. Yeah. No, he um, had it right. He runs away from them. Uh, so so here, 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 here's how it goes. A, pretty good uh, a customer calls me up and says, I need something done yesterday. And I never happen. Now I now that I'm no. educated and I'm educating myself with your product and it's making sense that it's affordable, it's the right thing to do, it's structural, blah blah blah. I call you, how long until you can actually come out and do the project? Tomorrow. It depends. <laughs> if you have the line locates already done, typically one to two days. And if you're in an emergency, we'll try to get you the next day. Wow. So one to two days. Yeah, we we want Unless to be faster than concrete storm. sonotube. And the thing is, is we have a policy in our office. If you call us, we have we want to answer you within an hour. So basically, That's email or not. You guys will come, assess, price, drill, walk away before that concrete is cured. Yes. That's how fast we are. Unless there's a thunderstorm. Oh. Well, here, here, here's another. Here's no, another. I get the junior guy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I gotta have the last word. This guy, <laughs> and that guy's always shocked <laughs> and screwed. <laughs> okay, so so here's a, here's another uh, really important question. Um, I have two engineers that I deal with. I have a high end engineer and I have a low end engineer. And when I'm saying that is, if I'm doing a, a full addition and it's modern, I'll use one. And if I'm doing basic structural, I have a second one. So I want to, uh, I, I want you to bring your product in, and I want to work with my with my engineer. How do I connect you two? Well, the first thing I'd say is we're always here to save the contractor time. You just give us the drawing or the. The, his contact and we'll deal directly with him and we'll find a solution for you or if her. you want if or, or her. her if you want to be involved always want to be involved. no problem we're, we'll we'll help you with that is there any areas that you can't work or no we got some in we got there's a dealer in alaska wow yeah so really there is nothing that you can well, put it this way the timmons dealer he put his uh, machines in a plane went to ottawa Pascat, drilled some no. piles and they built a police station no way and <laughs> she, are we you had, kidding me you know what on top of that we've actually de- they actually developed these are that's how smart these guys are it's crazy they developed a rod they put the rod you drill three quarter inch in a permafrost put the rod start the generator it's gonna Melt the ice, you drill your pile, and then you're rock and rolling. Wow. Yep. There is no can't. Yep. There's no it's can't. Amazing. No, it's it's pretty amazing what they could do. And because the machine's only 29 inches, you could put that anywhere. You could put that on your back. Historical or conservation, those are the two hardest parts in construction that we have the biggest headaches well, with. Well, I'll give you an example of Halton Conservation where they wanted to build uh, a staircase system. And they had it engineered with concrete. And... They went in and it hit backfill and was terrible. They called us. We were it was just around the shop. We were there in 20 minutes on site. And we're like, this is going to be easy for us. We're just going to drill deeper. Go, we went down 15 to 20 feet. We were done again in a week. Wow. And on top of that, their budget for uh, concrete sonotus was 52000 and yours we, was fifty two dollars. No, we came at almost <laughs> half price. Wow! Wow! That's now what you call. It, that's what you call an old dog learning new tricks. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Only oh. took fifteen years. Yeah. Thirty. No, thirty. <laughs> he's been in construction for thirty. And he's only thirty one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> I forgot to mention to ask you, Roger. I know that some of the dealers, including yourself, you guys will handle the locates. 
Yeah, we do all the locates. We do 100% of everything. Do you wash my van? I know. Like, <laughs> yeah, if you want. Are you kidding? <laughs> if you give us, like, a, if you sell us, you listen, give us. I got, I got a little bit of carpentry to do inside someone's house. Do you guys do that? <laughs> yes. No. Thousand dollars. No. Well, that's no. it. You're hired. <laughs> uh, so, so what you're saying is, I don't have to call before you dig anymore. No, we do that. Uh, one of the biggest problems I see in brand new home builds is the front steps. They're constantly sagging. Yeah. So I could, mm -hmm. I could make a, a great business by calling you guys up putting some footings in and putting those stairs on they'll never sag so we, we do tons of simple as that so we'll we do this year we'll do that about business tomorrow by the way before anybody <laughs> fucking jumps all over it <laughs> we'll do about 1500 projects this year i i, I don't know man we got well listen, I mean, listen, listen we here here's the guy. here's i don't know what it is for you guys but okay so we're here to to uh, talk about new products yeah things changing yep. the construction for the better yes uh, educating ourselves um, helping out the new generation of young kids. Yep. Um, Educating the older yeah. kids. Uh, one mm -hmm. of the big things that we have to work on is recycling, which th this product is 100%. Huge. So let me ask you something. Is the metal recycled? Yes. Well, give you an example. What? Shit, there's a yes to everything. I give don't believe this. Back in 2006, we were doing construction Canada. And we had a guy come to our booth. And uh, he's like, where's your green balloon? I go, what are you talking about, a green balloon? He's, he's like, well, aren't you environmentally friendly and all that? I'm like, okay, I'm here to sell helical piers, techno metal posts. We're here to find solutions. He's like, you see all those green balloons? Everybody's saying how environmentally friendly they are and all these things. That's just a benefit, you know? Mm -hmm. So for us, it, that's... You, you, that's a given. You guys are already doing that. Yeah, we're You don't need doing, to scream and shout about every, that. But every, every post we do, if we do the cutoffs, goes in a steel bin. You know what I mean? I yeah. get a... Well, get a couple bucks. Recycled. But but here here's something really important too. How many trees are we saving, tree huggers? Yeah, man. How exactly. many trees are we saving? Also, they have the uh, their electric machines. Give That's us a what call. we forgot. Or even you if guys you want to be a deal on seismic posts. Seismic. Yes. I, I thought that would have been a little too technical. For seismic. No, oh my this, is amazing. this is yes. amazing because yes. we've done hurricane homes. Okay, so we're working on some of that where we could drill piles in existing uh, buildings. And the, the, I don't know all the technical, but the pile takes some of that uh, um, movement, the, that the, the force. Wow. It, no springs. It just. Yeah. So I don't know the whole story, but they're, they're working they're on working it. They're working on it. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like amazed right now, buddy. Well, this is what we're, why, this is why we're here. We're yeah, here to, no, to show crazy. what amazing products there are out there. We need guys like you to come on here and explain where technology is going, where construction is going, and how it's going to change. Yeah, but more importantly, why? Awareness. Why? Yeah, and why? Exactly. Why, why is really important. And you know what? You sold me when you said you're going to do all the work, <laughs> and, I don't have to, and I don't have to hire anyone or educate anyone. Uh, I was going to oh, try to man. grease you. I had 20 bucks. I'll keep that in my pocket. <laughs> You, you know what? Uh, Let, let's go bowling. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. Hey, Roger, is that shirt recycled? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Manny are uh, uh, are the old dogs, right? Again? Are we the old dogs? First of all, hey, wait, 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 I am not an I'm old the dog. oldest you're not again. Old. You're not I'm old. the oldest again. No, you're not. You're not. Don't <laughs> worry. But I'm learning. Yeah. Old dogs, new tricks. That was what this. I'm a good-looking old man. No. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> sure. You, you know what? We're we're, we're drawn to good-looking people and athletic people. I can't really speak for the athletic part right now, but <laughs> one out of two ain't bad. I look like I look like a panther. <laughs> Since there's no cameras here, I think we all look like tens. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, Roger. I like you. There's Roger. no video, right? right <laughs> Holy shit! I love. This guy. That, <laughs> that was seismic. <laughs> <laughs> and, if, and if there's cameras, I meant 10 out of 100. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey. Man, you got no questions? You got no, nothing? No, you know what? He's answered pretty much everything. I no, mean, well, um, I, got a, I got another question. I want to build a garage. I could do the same thing. Yes. I don't have I do to, tons of I garages. I don't have to do footings no, anymore. On a Four concrete feet slab. No. Garage. On a concrete slab. We could put our piers, put some steel beams, or just put some... You uh, imagine that, Curly? Uh, like, you don't have to excavate, build your concrete barns? block, the yeah, foundation. Yeah, we do tons oh of those. Oh, my God. Well, on a Ravini, we did a deck with about 60 piles. We were done in seven hours. I bought two machines. <laughs> wow. That is a, what Okay, so um, what has been your hardest project that's been the biggest... Like, there has to have been a project that a you challenge. remember that, was, that completely stands out in your mind that was the biggest headache or the biggest turnaround in your business. This what, is the first no that he's going to say Roger, now. wasn't it that one that had, was 
on the hillside where you guys had to actually put the reinforcing ones to hold it? Yeah, we had to do uh, staircases right on a riverbank. And we had to use some tiebacks and put some machines, come alongs, and use uh, come along or small machines onto the big machines. So that's those are always more our challenges because the challenge with installing helical piers on a ravine is you have to go below the angle. You know, the the slide, what happens, the geotech's going to say, you know what, you have to make sure that the piles are deep enough. So if there's a 100-year slide, the wow. piers are still going to stay there. So the challenge was is we had good soil. We had it at 10, 12 feet, but we had to go to 18 feet. So so you have geologists working for you? No, no they're no. geotechnical engineers. Okay. So it's called it, the, the conservation are huge on slow stability tests. So they'll say, you need a geotech to go see and make sure that slope is not going to fall or is not going to slide in 100 years. Once that done, we could help with that solution. We've actually... So you're drilling straight down and then you're drilling on an angle to bite into the slope of the bed. We could do both. We could put some angled piers for tieback system and if wow. we need more lateral loads. So they actually did one in Quebec City. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Geotech. So we put some... Uh, some uh, piles that were straight for the compression and then we put some battered piles for uh, the lateral loads so we've got your phone number which is 905-467-3172 we've got the website which yes. is triple w techno metal post dot ca or no, dot, dot, com. dot com sorry techno metal post dot com then there's also email Yes. Right. So you can send it to what info at if you go on it on the email on the technometalpost dot com, yeah. find a dealer. Yep. The phone number in a dealer of that area yeah. is going to be. And there. then you could also bump into Carlito, bump into myself, bump into Mike, yeah. and just ask us. Our in a GTA, and we'll connect you. Our email is info at technopost .ca. Okay. You know what? Perfect. The worst thing that you did, Manny, today is introduce me to Roger because I'm going to call him all the time. <laughs> I do it all the time anyway. No, you know what? That's what we're here for. I, I truly, and you know what? We get that all the time. And I really want you guys to understand this. For us, we're service. Without you guys, we're 100 fucking nothing. 100% customer so service. If you call us 10, 15 times a day, that's okay. Because you know what? When I started, I was a pain in the ass to our engineers. I called them 100 times a day. And you know what I learned? He always answered the phone. I learned from these guys. I'm trying to bring this, but it doesn't matter. If you want facts, if you want to buy mail will work with anybody anyhow it's how about it's about how you guys want to work it's not about us i'll okay. call him just to pick his okay brain. so i got one 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 last question for sure. you uh, for now until we can bring you back here i want to i want to see him again where he's and, coming and, back and, you know and i'm gonna learn i'm gonna do some more studying and i yeah, want to yeah. i want to i want to learn more about your product <laughs> what is up and coming that you can share with us there's got to be something What's really new? cool and new coming up. Well, the seismic thing is what blew me away. Well, that's pretty, that's a technical thing. But what we've developed is uh, what we're able to do is we're able to do low tests, mechanical low tests on our machine. We've developed a product that could tell you exactly what the load is, is going to hold. And it's going to go right to a computer and right to uh, our software. And when we're drilling the piles, if we go to 50 shit. to 100 feet, we could get all that reading right in our office. So I can and get... We, and we could send that to your engineer and explain to you... Or the city. Yeah, the city. So say if you, you, you want to build a house, they've excavated, you see it's disturbed soil. You know, you get a geotech, but we could also come and help in the meantime and drill some piles and let you know how deep you need to go where you have load-bearing capacity on printouts. We have a few things that we're working on as well, but wow. one thing we didn't hit on as well is... We're the only company in the world that makes our own machinery, our own equipment. Oh, yeah. So, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. You guys make the tools that yeah. we, drive We drill well. our drilling Who machines. Can sell and our engineer, or, yeah. they designed it wow. in six months. The visionary, they, they did some design concepts. Six months later, it's working. What, I, are, what the, are the names again of the tools? They gave them these names. Well, our uh, smallish machine goes into standard door sizes, 28 and a half inches. It's called the R2D. 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 <laughs> our, our middle machine is called the EM1, and that's just the initial of ATN. And, uh, you know, Maxim, those are the ones that built and designed it. And that's 48 inches wide with a track. And then we have a big commercial machine. It's called the ET. 
<laughs> one. Okay. Someone someone in engineering is in the comic of, books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know we got we got a techie on board, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking you guys should should not only like you guys should build a nightclub nope. on helical piles. And you guys should name it the Techno Metal Place. And you guys should have techno in one section and heavy metal in the other section. <laughs> the Techno Metal Club. <laughs> It's a good it's thing amazing. he's a contractor. Yeah, right? it is. <laughs> give, me, give me some Euro beats. I think that is the cue. The show with Roger is over. Roger, thank you very much for being here, joining us on Construction Life. Thanks for having us, guys. I think it was a great episode. I got to learn a lot of stuff. I learned a lot today. Us new old or us old dogs and learning new tricks. How about one old dog over here? Roger, did you have a good time? Did you have a good time, Roger? Thank you, Roger. Hey, Roger. Yes, I did. Thank you. So that's a wrap on episode number six, and we're looking forward to episode number seven, where we get a chance to talk about Mikey, Carlito. And myself. What? Oh, yeah. For We're going to tell everybody, our listeners, about us. But Roger's going to be there. Roger will <laughs> not be there. No. I think Mike Roger likes Roger. Is, I do like Roger that. Roger is <laughs> you, know, you know what? We get, you're, you're right, Manny. We get to bring Mike out. Mike's best out of him. He loves talking about himself. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So tune in Roger. next week when you get to learn quite a bit about... Mikey, Carlito, and myself. Is that what seriously is going on? Yes. The next episode is the three of us. Did you get the memo? That's going to be boring. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> not going to be boring. <laughs> <laughs> it will not be boring. <laughs> Take us out of here, Mikey. We're no, gone. I'm going to let Roger, Carlito thank you very much. Beats. Ready, Carlito? <laughs> next week's episode. <laughs> it's Manny, Carlito, and Mikey, not Roger. <laughs> and we're going to have all, everything you guys want to know about us. Yeah. <laughs> And where are we coming from, Carlito? T.O., baby. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> uh, 905, 6! <laughs> yeah, T.O., baby. <laughs> yes.